began painting in 2009 when I was diagnosed with a life-threatening allergy to heat. And I lived in Cincinnati where it was really hot, so I was stuck inside for about four months. And um, I felt like my life was over, and this voice inside me just said, it's time to paint, you've always wanted to paint. And which surprised me, because I didn't even know that I wanted to paint. But um, I had a lot of free time, so I just began um, painting and experimenting and watching online classes and TV shows, and uh, it just changed my life. I don't have any formal training. Um, I didn't major in art in college. I did take a lot of classes in high school, but it wasn't until I began painting in 2009 that I started um, taking online courses, and um, I would watch uh, David Bromstad's show on HGTV and watch him paint and copy his art. My favorite thing about working in mixed media is that I'm always learning something new. I'm learning new techniques, but I'm also learning about myself, and that translates into my life as well. So you have to um, acquire a lot of qualities to be an artist, and including being brave, taking risks, um, not being afraid to try new things, and that has carried over into my life in really exciting ways. The best part to me about teaching art is that I get to share what I'm passionate about with other people. So when I learn something new or have a um, new revelation about art and life, I'm really excited to share it with others. And then when I see my students take what I'm sharing and make it their own, it's just really thrilling to see that the creative process continue and um, just move forward in really exciting ways. My most recent breakthrough with my art involves bringing yoga into my life. When I was working on my book last year, I noticed when I sat down at the computer to write, I felt lethargic, my attention span was short, and I just didn't feel good. And I realized that it was my body that I needed to work on to help me write the book. So I started taking yoga, and this really led to a transformation with my art itself. Um, I knew I was painting in a somewhat restrained way, and I just knew there was more to come out. Um, I had this wild side that I, I just knew was stuck inside me. And yoga is about um, clearing energy channels. So as I continued to practice yoga one day, um, I was painting, and I just felt this new, um, more carefree energy come through in my art. And I just sensed that it was related to the yoga, and this continues to affect my art. So I was really excited to share that with others because I paint um, intuitively and when you do that, you are not painting from your um, analytical mind, you're incorporating your mind, body, and spirit. So the body piece was missing for me and I was able to really tap into this creative source within me um, and let it, allow it to find expression on the canvas. So you, if you look at my art, um, a few months ago, it started to change. It has more loose and free movement, and that's directly um, a result of doing the yoga. So I was really excited to share that with other artists as well. When I think about the direction of my art in the future, I see it as getting um, even more carefree and looser. It's a quality I'm always trying to bring into my work. Um, it's just a place where I'm interested in going, and so I'm trying to continue down that path of just being really free and open in my expression. When I first began painting, I naturally um, started painting flowers, and then I thought too many people paint flowers, so I tried not to, and I explored other um, subjects. But I just found myself, when I let myself be me, I was always coming back to the flowers. And um, flowers have a lot of um, significance in my family. We have a lot of family lore regarding flowers. Um, my grandma ro loved roses, and um, my grandfather used to give her, instead of a dozen on Valentine's Day, he would surprise her with one every month. And my dad was a gardener, so I spent a lot of time gardening and weeding um, as a child. So I've always been surrounded by flowers, and I just find them very inspiring and beautiful um, as far as their visually and um, their scents. So it just really stimulates my creativity and there's so much you can do with them because they're free, organic shapes. There are so many artists that have influenced me. Um, it's hard to name them all, but what I'm even more in, um, inspired by are their stories and their lives. So there are a lot of um, women artists that currently inspire me, not just artistically, but in this general art journey. Um, a lot of them I asked to be in my book and they contributed to that. So um, a few would be Alina Hennessy, Kelly Ray Roberts, um, Flora Boley, 
These women are just living really bravely and um, really carving their own path and it's just really inspiring to me. So I watch them closely. I watch what they're doing and um, the choices they're making and their bravery and their creativity in their lives and in their business and in their art really inspire me and keep me going too. My advice to anyone just starting on the art journey would be um, to not give up. It can be a really frustrating road as well as rewarding one and there is no set path so you're really going out into the unknown which can be um, exhilarating and terrifying and frustrating. So you need support and um, you just need to never give up. Um, I have a mantra that I follow every day which is um, just do at least one, take at least one step every day in the direction of your dreams. So it can be something small or large and even if you don't have a lot of time, if you do at least one thing every day, that adds up to a lot of things and you will see the impact in your art and your life. So just keep going and um, find a community to support you.